Osles Iglesias versus Senna Ajigbeko, 10 rounds in the 168 pound division. This fight is on the undercard of Mbili versus Duryachenko. Let's get into it. Let's start with their respective records. Iglesias, 11 wins, no losses, 10 wins by way of knockout. Ajik Beko, 28 wins, 3 losses, 22 wins by way of knockout. Another tough opponent for Ajik Beko. He is taking another tough fight against another tough Cuban. He's coming off of a loss when he fought David Morrell, where he got stopped in the second round. But even though he got stopped, Ajik Beko didn't go down without a fight. He tried to stand his ground as best as he could for a little bit, right? And he just made a mistake. He got caught with a shot that he was hurt. And then he retreated to the place where you don't want to retreat to in boxing. And that's in the corner. He got stuck in the corner. David Morrell came and overwhelmed him with a barrage of shots. And one of the shots landed on the right side of his head, hitting that temple and his body almost collapsed. He got stuck in the wrong position against someone that you do not want to be in that position against and it was over with it was a very good stoppage by the ref because that was getting very ugly and it was going to look very very bad going over to iglesias man you know i have made a couple videos about him already if you haven't heard about iglesias before and don't know too much about him that's a bad man right there man he's got devastating power the hands are heavy we always talk about fighters who have one shot knockout type of power versus that accumulation type of power. Iglesias got that one shot knockout devastating type of power. Ajik Beko had troubles when he was fighting David Morrell because David Morrell, the movement was good, the speed was good, and he had the power. And I felt like when Ajik Beko fought David Morrell, it was just overwhelming to handle all of that all together at the same time in one man. Now, Iglesias doesn't move as fast as David Morrell. His movement isn't as fluid as David Morrell. But to me, I think he punches with more of a sting than David Morrell. Iglesias is, what's the right word, man? Punishing with his shots. Like he generates a lot of power without really sitting down on them. He doesn't need a whole bunch of space to make his powers effective and to make his opponents feel it. You know, he does get hit, right? But you have to get his respect and you have to take a risk. And sometimes when you take a risk, you actually pay the price. But you got to toss up that coin and see what the game plan is for Ajik Beko to see what they're going to do and how they're going to handle this, right? In Iglesias' last fight when he fought Evgeny Shevdenko, um, it seemed like for a good portion of the first round that like, you know, Shevdenko was starting to find his groove and his rhythm a little bit. You know, he was using his jab, staying away from the power, boxing pretty well. But then he got clipped in the middle of the ring with an exchange. And when he got clipped, you could see with his right hand that he was trying to fix his mouth guard. So it seemed like that one shot knocked out his mouthpiece and he had to go around and try to fix it. But after that shot, after he felt the power, man, you could see he went very defensive and he was on the back foot and trying to use his legs to not engage if he did not need to. But it wasn't a small ring, so you can't run forever. And Iglesias started to really walk him down and really started to let his hands go a little bit more and started to catch him a little bit more. Iglesias caught Shevdanko a few seconds later, man, with the shot that looked like it landed on the right side of his temple. And immediately Shevdanko, his body just collapsed. And that turned out to be, man, probably one of the most scariest knockouts that I've seen because Shevdanko just lost complete control of his body. Thank God that he's okay. But that looked terrible when you're watching it live. But that's just the type of power that Iglesias possesses, man. He has that type of strength in his hands. When you look at it from an experience standpoint, Ajik Beko is the more experienced fighter and he's a guy that can punch. But it's going to be interesting, man. You know, he couldn't handle all that was coming at his way when he fought David Morrell. I don't know if, how he's going to handle what's going to come his way against Iglesias as well, too. You know, in when he has fought a guy like David Morrell, you have to ask, has Ajik Beko learned from that experiences when he fought David Morrell? 
if he isn't careful, it could be lights out for him early as well, too. But I also think, you know, we could see Iglesias being tested, right? And see if Beko has the power to test Iglesias' chin. And if Beko can gain the respect of Iglesias, it could possibly work in his favor. Obviously, we'll see how it unfolds on the night. So who wins? Before I give my pick on this fight, I have something real quick to share. You know, I'm always looking to bring more light, more value, more opportunities for the community. I've been working on a few different things in recent weeks to not just grow the channel, but as I said, to continue to provide as much value as I can to each of you in our community. With that being said, I got some exciting news to share. I'm happy to announce my partnership with Betstamp and Sign Up Expert. It's a great opportunity for you to join some of the best sports books to get the best odds and new user offer. All you have to do is head over to my dedicated page at signupexpert.com slash the breakdown to explore a selection of sports books tailored to your region, each with its own unique offerings so if you want to place a bet this weekend and on this fight and beyond check out the link to find the best options for you in your region every sign up does support the channel and it helps the channel grow and to expand and to create more opportunities not just for me but for our community you know i'm always looking out for you guys as best as i can you can easily find the link in the description below this videos and videos moving forward. So get down there and check it out and find the best option for you. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, Ajik Beko has three losses on his resume already. Uh, he's been stopped two of those three times. So the game plan is going to be very pivotal in this fight. You know, he's either got to decide to box on the outside and fight on the back foot, use his jab and be consistent with jabbing combinations and getting out of range, or he's got to try to overwhelm Iglesias. But there's a certain risk that you have to take in order for that to work in his favor. Being on the front foot could work for him or it could also work against him because you're forced to stand inside of a pocket with a man who can punch a little harder than you can. I do want to see Iglesias go the rounds because I do think the experience would serve him well in the long run and I do want to see him tested and I think Beko can prove to be a formidable opponent and test that chin. But I don't see this fight going the distance, man. I think Iglesias is going to win this fight by stoppage. Ajikbeko didn't handle the southpaw stance of David Morrell very well, nor did the speed or the quickness, but I think the stance is going to be a problem. The overhand right hand was consistently landing for David Morrell against Ajikbeko. That's a shot that Iglesias likes to use and has had success with and has stopped opponents with, and I think that shot is going to be there. But obviously, we'll see how it goes on the night, but I'm expecting Oslay's Iglesias to win this fight by stoppage. So those are my thoughts. I would love to hear from you. How do you think this one goes? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you've been watching the video this long, then do me a favor, like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel before you go. And we'll definitely see you next time.